G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I am finally going to get this drone working today, I think. I'm pretty sure I've got enough materials to do so, hopefully. I'm certain I have enough iron, but nickel and silicon may be an issue. Fingers crossed they aren't. I am also going to show off something that I finally put the effort into learning, which is how to get this hydroponics system working. Turns out that I needed to put water, gravel and nutrient solution into the enclosed hydroponics farm. The nutrient solution being made in the food protein, protein resequencer. Uh, this thing made from organics and drinking water packets. Then that'll turn it into algae soy product. Now algae soy product I could turn into tofu, which I could then turn into into two into a protein shake. So I can finally make some more interesting foods if I leave this running for a while and make a decent amount of algae soy product. It's kind of cool. I'm a little bit excited about that because it'll be nice to get my food bar above 50. First thing I need to do today is get the Goofy 2 out of the hangar and figure out how I'm going to get that drone inside and attach to the base oriented around the direction that I want it to be. Because I want the large thruster as the main lifting thruster on this drone. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. 44,000 iron. Nice! Very, very nice. Oh, I'm in so... <laughs> wow, this is so much better. I'm actually in a pretty good position, iron-wise. That's That'll last me... That's going to last me a while. That's 50 some odd thousand. That should get this office built. Ooh. Maybe I could build the office first. So that I've got a pressurized space right nearby the hangar. Yeah. I'll get the drone in here. Then I'll build the office. Oh, actually. No, I kind of want to wait on the office because I want to figure out how I'm going to do the conveyor system. So yeah, I'll get the drone done first. The drone's probably more exciting to get finished anyway. And then we can do a little bit of base building over the next couple of weeks after that. Because hopefully... Oh, the rotten thing. Inverted steering and not... No. That's it. Now, I do need to make some adjustments to the crane's hitch at some point. Probably to make it a bit longer. And I think when I eventually build a crane inside the hangar for manipulations that I need to do inside there... I might also try and move the crane down to the front of the vehicle. Because I feel like that could be beneficial. So instead of the crane sitting be over between these two wheels, I'll sit it over maybe even in front here. Because this front end should be pretty heavy with all the functional blocks and stuff like that. So I'm not going to greeble this thing for a while until I've played around with the positioning and adjusting stuff. The good thing about having six wheels front and back is that I'll be able to detach the rotors in the hitch and modify stuff without needing additional buildings or additional stuff to be built in there. As in I won't need to support it because the six wheels front and back should do the supporting for each. <laughs> that flexing. Uh, uh, I think what I'm going to do is rotor, distal rotors. Let's give you guys even more braking torque than that. Let's let's go ten times. One hundred fifty thousand is sorry, fifteen thousand instead of fifteen hundred. Yeah, that's a little bit better. There's always going to be a bit of flexing around that. Uh, I don't feel that that's something I can avoid. Oh, that's the other thing I need to do. I need to grab the crane trailer wheels. Oh, their friction's only 50%. Hmm. What if I drop the friction just on these front ones? Down to, say, 25. The idea of dropping the friction on these front ones down is I think these are the ones that are trying to scrape the most when I turn around any corner, so hopefully this should make turning a little easier. This thing's actually heaps easier to reverse than the goose. Right, that's about where I want to stop. 
I think I want a camera somewhere, like, mounted about where that tree is, in line with where that tree is, but pointing backwards so that I can look at the crane from that fixed position, because... Uh, I'm going to try something. I'm going to demonstrate it with spectator camera. So, if I use spectator camera, I would love to have a camera about this position. Because I think that would be a relatively useful spot to have a camera to operate this crane from. Or maybe even off to one side. One on each side, so I can flick between them. So that'll give me a... Yeah, that'll give me a better position, better perspective on what's going on. But I'm not going to use... I mean, I suppose there's no harm in using spectator cam since I use third person anyway. Well, let's try and get this thing working. Can I remember the controls that I set up last week? So I've got to make sure that that thruster is pointing downward when I let go of this thing. And that appears to be as far as I can move it with just the rotor. Rats. Um, so I may have to drop this thing and then pick it up and flip it over. <laughs> Oh, I know what I should be doing. What I want to do is pick this, is lock on in a position where the weight will want to pull it in the direction I want it to go. Ah, that makes so much more sense. Oh, and I've jumped to the F8 spectator cam because I was really, really struggling with positioning. And rather than me spend hours and hours longer at this than I want to, I figured it was reasonable for me to just do this so that I could get it done. <laughs> Because I needed a better angle. I will definitely be putting on some better camera, well, some cameras in some better positions in the future, but I just didn't want to mess around with that right now because I really want to get this drone in some sort of working order. So if I grab on there, the weight of the whole drone should want to pull it around so that it's then oriented the way that I wanted it to be. Oh, look at that! Vertical. I can now lock this to the base once I get it in position. Yes. Uh, need to extend out the middle hinge as much as possible. Get that off the ground while I then go back to controlling the vehicle directly. Burst this sucker in. Oh, look at that! Yeah, perfect. Cool. All right, now what I need to do is build something to attach to. Put that down and then I can pop a rotor on top and that should do the trick. I'm so glad this crane can do stuff while it's not locked to the ground. It makes life a lot easier. Although trying to get it to lock to this rotor is going to be an interesting exercise. Basically what I needed to do is lock down to that. Which I suppose could be easier if I sort of get it in position and then put a rotor part on there. Yeah, that's probably best. Alright. I think I'm going to go back to using the spectator cam for this bit because I can't get a good angle inside the garage. Pop that on there. And then pop a rotor part on it. Can I get it in the wraps? Oh. Ooh, it's close. I need to move a little bit forward. <laughs> this is going to be very difficult. Ugh, that's not going to work. How close is that? That might actually be close enough. I hope I don't do any damage to anything when I do this, but I think there's a chance... Yes! Yes! <laughs> what? All right. Crane, get out of here. I'm building a drone. Just in the way now. Yes! Oops, scraping on the roof as I come out. Ah, that was so fiddly. That literally took me half an hour to do. Half an hour of fiddling that thing into space, into place. Oy. What the? It's now done. Uh, retract that. Check it out. Now, 
quick check of thruster components. Complete. I think I own the whole thing now. Like I, I, yeah, I think I own all the blocks. So I'm going to need a bunch of motors for that one. A bunch of everything for that one. Uh, I've gotten... I mean, I've saved a little bit of material with using this thing. So what I'm thinking I will do with this is fairly simply add the necessary directional thrusters that it doesn't have. Uh, I'll probably actually get rid of this down... I'll probably just turn it off, actually. I'll leave the downward thrust just in case I turn this into something automated down the line. I don't know why that suddenly decided I wanted to spin. I don't need that on there. I don't need that on there. Ooh. Oh. Why, thank you. I will take that. So all I really need to do for this thing is add an ore detector. And at a later stage, what I'm thinking I'm going to do, as I tested this out just mucking around with something else, I think I'm going to make this capable of carrying a large grid ore detector. So my plan is have a connector on this and have a battery plus large ore detector plus connector on a separate grid. So I can just lock down to that with a connector and carry it around. That way I should be able to scout out a huge amount more territory. But to do that, I'm going to need more of these thrusters and I don't think I've got enough nickel just now. Although I've got a nickel mine. Maybe I should do that. In fact, maybe I will do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that. Stuff it. What's the... There's no point in me doing much else. I Like, if I can fly around with a large, a large ore detector, I can scout out just standard territory and just see what I can find. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That will make this so much more worthwhile. I need to build this rotor, though. And I'm going to switch Steve over to following with the spinny camera. Oh, yeah. I like this idea. So, in order to make sure I can carry the other... Uh, carry a heavy thing like a large grid ore detector... What I'm thinking I'll do is possibly try and add another two more large atmospheric thrusters. One at the end of each of these stalks off the side, so we'll have like three pods like this one up here. And then the connector will sit up the front, which should be able to hook on to the special, the extra grid. I could make this directly pilotable, I guess. I'm vaguely tempted to do so. No, no, I don't want to, because then I have to bring all of the extra stuff along, like oxygen and all that sort of stuff. No, 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 no. I want to keep this relatively light by just needing a remote control. Yeah, that makes sense. That is actually logical. Um, I'll need to have plenty of battery power to ensure that I don't run dry on any of the trips I'm out there. Because I want to be able to have a good, solid flight range. Oh, I'm so excited by this. This is going to be epic. I should have decided all that time ago that I was going to do it this way. Because this will genuinely make it a better setup for me. The chance that I might find some underground deposits while I'm flying around. Being able to scout out potential underground deposits so much faster and then get the Goofy over there. Oh, be a million times better. I, especially if I find an underground iron deposit. I'm properly excited right now. <laughs> Let's see how my hydroponics are going because my food and water are a little bit low. Um, I'm interested. I know I can eat the algae soy product. Oh, and it fills me up. Huh. There probably is a benefit to going to the other one, but... It filled me up anyway, so... This is alright. I'm actually at... Fuller than I've been through legitimate means since the start of the game. Awesome. I am using a little bit of power running that all the time, though. So, there is a downside, but the battery power on the food truck is pretty solid right now. So, I've been avoiding flight in this game largely due to the planetary gravity. It's 1.9 Gs, so any flight is going to take a lot more power. It's going to cost a lot more energy to keep flying. But I think I've gotten fairly comfortable with my power reserves now, so I should be able to spend them in this way and not feel like I'm doing the wrong thing. If I can put 
a large atmospheric thruster there and let's make sure this is spun around the right way because that will drive me a bit up the wall if I've not done that. Yeah, I think at the leading edge be the taller side. So, call it there or probably there actually. And that'll make sense in a moment. Hold up. Just trying to think of where the armor greebles are going to go around these thrusters. And perhaps. Ow. That. Ow. That really hurt. That took me down to 54. Ow. That's so they can go around. Yeah. That works. And then we attach the thruster to this bit. So I'll have three thrusters arranged like that. Yeah. I'm happy with that. I will almost certainly make this central part more robust than it currently is. I'm not particularly happy with it being so flimsy as the fleeting rival is by as standard. Um, but I'm just going to work off that design for now and then I'll add a whoops and then I'll add a few extra support beams and things like that to make sure that it can take a little bit more damage. Though this thing is not intended to get into any sort of combat. So uh its response to a threat will be run, 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 run as fast as you can. I don't know what color I'm going to paint this. <laughs> I'm not a fan of what I've done so far, but I'm, gonna, I'm still not sure. I might, uh, might do a quick once over and paint it all. Let's go... Hmm. It's a kind of a or scouting drone, so let's go something a little bit... Hive is yellow and battered. Oops. And I'll add some dark grey bits to it so that it kind of gets a bit more of an industrial vibe rather than a military one. I kind of like that so far, actually. <laughs> there are enough grey bits on the decoratives that I could probably just do, say, a few little pieces around like that to bring it all together yeah yeah I'm, I'm gonna be happy with this I quite like that as a look I know it's not gonna make a lot of sense that all the lifting thrust is at the rear here um, although no it's not gonna make sense <laughs> it's just gonna be ridiculous um, yeah I suppose I could try and get the connector underneath this battery and that would make it make a little more sense And then just try and fill the front end with batteries. Oh, I really wish I could have taken this off. Hello? Hang on a sec. I have an idea. I do that and that. Oh no, the road is going to cause problems with that. What I was going to do which was going to potentially cause some serious clang, was try and get a battery in like that on either side. I would really like to, but I think what I need to do is, unfortunately, uh, make this thing pilotable and flyable, detach it, lift it up a bit, and then reattach it at a greater height so that I can actually get in under there and place stuff around where I want it. Um, so... We have left and right thrust, we have lifting thrust, and I need to have some forward and backwards. Where do I want to sneak that in? Okay, where shall I put the gyro? If I'm going to put two batteries down either side, that means I've got that spot in the middle for a gyro. I possibly want a little more gyro power than that, but for now, one will be enough. Right. Energy low. Gyro. Thruster, remote, antenna. That's everything I need. I'm also going to need to put an antenna somewhere on this base. Which brings me to something else I wanted to... Oh, can't do it from there. I have a look at this. We've got the antenna dish. I want to put a satellite dish somewhere on my base as my main antenna. I'm not going to do it as the first thing because... Well, hard. Um... <laughs> Because it's going to be a big build, because I want it to have rotor-actuated things so I can kind of 
move it around or have it on some sort of unusual angle but I'm totally using that big dish instead of just a regular antenna I did not realize until just then that it's available for small grid too which is awesome because I could make a mini one if I didn't want to make the giant one okie dokie let's detach you Right apart uh, actually let me thrusters are you all on yes okay and goodbye wait that's on auto mm. why are your thrusters not working they all look off battery toggle it off and toggle it back on again and the thrusters are all still static why there we go because i know it's going to be named this way i'm just going to try and see what rename whether renaming the grid does anything i still can't control it like i am moving my mouse around like crazy and the gyro is doing nothing and weirdly i can convert this small grid ship or to station what how? How? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Alright. I am cutting this grid out. I am using creative mode because... This thing bugged. So that's going to look interesting in the time lapse. See? There we go. Pasted. Working. Just fine. Turn off. Creative mode tools. And we have a working grid. Right. Um, I need... A few extra blocks down here. Grab control of you. Put my rotor part on there. And then I'll reconnect it. This is so that the battery can get charged. I don't think I've got any vertically mounted connectors that I can hook up to unfortunately so I'll have to set one of those up soon turn my thrusters dampeners off and I have it hooked up again I don't know what to do about this I I hate having to use creative mode tools like that to fix it but honestly I tried all the things that I know that might fix grids like this and none of them worked and it's often a problem that you run into when you're converting stuff from a subgrid to a main grid and back again. And it's one of those things that it seems like there aren't any other fixes for. I suppose I could have reloaded the game. That might have fixed it. Uh, but because of Steve and having to load in with him, with it, his control of stuff, reloading into the game is actually a fairly big hassle. Um, uh, so I didn't really want to do that either. So I'm thinking maybe... Uh, let's use some more interior plates. Move that again. That attachment point. Yeah, thinking connector under here. It's out of the way of the thruster. It won't look quite so silly picking up the heavy thing. Uh, it's still going to look silly. That's a guarantee because the underslung thing is going to be so big. But it shouldn't look quite as silly. I need to stick the lateral thrusters on the front. And if I need to, if it turns out that this isn't strong enough still... I've got room at the front to add some more things. But overall, I kind of like this compact design. Well, semi-compact design, but the multiple levels of thrust. And if I ended up later on using this thing more, I would probably add a cockpit and things to the front. So I may just leave that all quite rough and exposed so that I've got room for adding a cockpit. Because I really do like... The general look of this is something that I could fly, and if I had a nose on it, it'd be kind of cool. 
two, and then two the other way on the other side. And that was going to be my limit of lateral thrust, which is three thrusters each way, which is, yeah, that should be all right. Uh, since this isn't a mining ship, I should be able to do a reasonable job of keeping it fairly level, I think. Just depends how much I'm under or... Well, depends on how much I'm underestimating the weight of the ore detector thing that I'm going to attach to the bottom. I should put a regular small detector on this and maybe put the vertical connector on this trailer and get rid of the large ore detector off it. Since the drone does kind of negate the use of this trailer, but I could then use this trailer to take the drone with me and at least have small grid, small range ore detector with it. That is an option. I'll have to consider that. I've also been thinking about the parking arrangements and an idea that I feel might work is have the connect some connectors coming out the side of this building maybe. Because the rear here is really not seeming like a great spot to park. Because I'll have to build a whole platform at about this level. I'm just thinking about that because I'm going to have to disconnect this soon. And I think if I pop one of these back here, I should be able to now place down my battery, which will be a large grid battery. Because <laughs> I don't want to multi-subgrid this thing. And I think having a connector is actually going to be safer than using a rotor for some weird reason. Or detector. I'm just going to need one more ramp to get up the top to place the connector. I was thinking connector there. And that's going to be my detector module. If I build that now again this battery should get some charge. It's another battery that can supply charge to the drone so it'll have even more flight time. Uh, it does make the whole thing quite heavy. But I think that's probably about as small as you can get while having the large grid ore detector if I don't use a rotor. If I used a rotor I could just use the ore detector and a single rotor part and then stick a rotor on the bottom here and attach that way. But in my little mucking around this system worked really stably. It seems like there's something better about connectors than rotors for some reason with the inertial dampeners they were working all that sort of stuff which was weird. I'm probably going to find that everything is going to be broken when I try it this time but oh well. I did test this in creative mode on earth like uh, I was just messing around with the butterball from survival maybe and I used the butterball in this arrangement to mess with some ore detectors and it, it worked. It worked really, really well. But yeah, the reason I built this on the interior wall is I'm just going to grind that out and then the thing is loose. Nice easy way of connecting it up without using too much in the way of resources to do so. Because the drone is ready to go. Once this is ready to go, I'll then build the antenna wait for daylight, and then I'm going out for my first scouting run. I'll greeble this up more later. Hoping these are getting some power. Just thought I'd move the crane out of the way, and it does look like the remote control for the trailer is a park brake, and quite an effective one. This is kind of cool. I'm really pleased to know that I can use a separate grid's parking brake just by putting a remote control on there really quite handy. I'm slightly worried that that's going to be too tall now that I've built it inside. <laughs> that could be a problem. Let's go watch the sunrise from somewhere interesting. Oh! Drat! Um, no. Let's not do that. Let's get an antenna on the base, you dope splitzy. I'm going to need an antenna. I'm going to need a camera on this. At least one. Uh, let's for now put camera somewhere at the front. I wonder how many people were are going to be frustrated by me <laughs> taking that long to realise that I didn't have a camera on here. Uh, camera there, and I'm going to want one underneath here as well for the landing. There we go, we have a camera. Now I need an antenna on the base. And I think 
I'm probably going to put the antenna, or at least the initial one, on top of here. Let's go with... Yes. Something in between these turbines is probably my best spot. I've got enough room for it. I don't want to block the... I can put it over here, and that'll only block one of the turbines, actually. That's probably smarter. And I won't block the turret placement when I eventually get around to that. Yeah, I think that works. And now the fun of many, many trips up and down these stairs. Okay, we have an antenna. Uh, range. I think let's go 15 kilometers for now. <sighs> Look at that. Just as the sun's rising. Timed it. Oh. I was really worried about building the drone today. I did not think I would get a design that I was happy with, and I'm actually kind of excited about this one. I was... Building a drone that just had a small grid or detector seemed like just such a waste. So I think this is going to be the trick. This is going to be what I need to make sure that this all works. And watching this sunrise right now is bringing back so many survival maybe memories. So many. <laughs> Walking out into that valley and watching it. Well, that's probably enough of the day wasted. <laughs> Just standing still. I should probably actually get back to flying the drone. Let's do it. Right, control. Control. Abner's on. And let's get rid of the connection. Alright, drone is good to go. Control searchy. Because I knew people would suggest something like that anyway, so I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to roll with it now. Uh, let's see about flying this out. Uh, and also about... Um, where have we got? View and view. Oh no, I'm about to run out of oxygen. Woo! That was close. <laughs> I... I must remember once I start flying away with this drone, that I need to be in a pressurized space, sitting in a chair, before I go and control it, because I don't want to die <laughs> running out of oxygen or power while I'm controlling the drone. I'm also going to want a switch lock or all of that. Didn't think I'd be able to fit out past the core detector at the front, and I wanted to test this without the heavy load first. There we go. Now we're clear. Oh yeah. Check it out. And... Zoom. Oh, I can't see the grid. Hang on. Oh yeah. Uh, I also want... Plug on off. And I want to set the broadcast radius to 20,000. So I've got like 20 minutes of power presently. It's not too bad. I think I lose you because I don't think you have much roll now. I wonder if I grind that advanced rotor part off if it'll tumble off the side just in case I do want the block. Drat didn't. Alright, gotta grind it down then. I was hoping it'd fall off one side. Yeah, if I put those two down, then I've got just that double gap, which could fit another O2H2 gen, which is perfect. And then, on top of it all, again, since I don't need to worry about cargo, I can just temporarily sort of permanently put... Yeah. Let's get this connect built. Just want to hook this up to the base while I... Figure out everything else. Cool. We're locked. 
it's got a charging point, it's got a carrier trailer so I can take the drone out. I can't bring along my large grid ore detector but I may be able to alter the way this thing's set up at some point so that I could potentially if I put a different attachment point somewhere that I could hook that thing on I could totally change up the way this trailer's set up altogether at some point uh, if I want to take a drill out and like scout further away without having to fly the scout the whole way there saving a whole lot of power uh, but I'll think about that in the future. For now, since it is getting to that time, I'm going to put away all this scrap, grab myself some fresh oxygen bottles, grind away that, that, and that. Realize that that was quite risky because I just did damage to things. Did not anticipate that much damage from dropping that only two and a half meters. Uh, I now need to figure out if I can... I now need to hope that I can pick up this thing with the Zergy drone. Let's see if I can get through the hangar. I need to be oriented kind of that way so I don't hit the camera rig, although I can rotate it out of the way if I need to. Okay, got my heavy load. Hoping I don't clip the door. All seems to be working. I'm not sinking, so my inertial dampeners are working, which is one thing I was worried wouldn't be the case. Oh yeah, this is amazing. It is working. I can now go scout for 40 minutes about that in within 20 kilometers of here. Let's do some of this. Uh, ore detector. I'll get you off. Make sure your range is set to max for when I do use you though. Your range to 150. Let's fly. I need to fly. Ooh, hang on a second. Am I better flying with this camera? No, I'm not. I need like a tail cam. That's what I need. I need a tail cam. <laughs> like you have on commercial liners. So that I can have some idea of the size of the thing I'm flying around with. I'm obviously not going to be quite as effective at getting stuff that might be a bit deeper underground. Because I'm flying rather than driving. But the extra terrain that I can cover has to make it worth it. Although I'm only probably going to be able to do these trips every few days. Uh, in game days that is because it's going to take hours to recharge these batteries so like when I was driving around with the Goofy 2 if I'm leaving a lot of this stuff in as I go around let me know because I should be able to figure if you see any uh, materials like this magnesium or probably more if there's underground stuff because I probably have marked this magnesium before uh, doesn't look like I have actually Oh, from, from home am I? Home is 2.02 slash GPS space MG dot 2.02 uh, The challenges of no surface ore markings. Eh, I really don't care about silicon. <laughs> oh no! I almost did that stupid thing I said I shouldn't do. Energy low. I need to get inside. I was flying with myself not seated and not in a pressurized space. Right. Sit down, Splitzy. Troll Searchy. Let's go. That's more like it. <laughs> now I'm safe. Ooh, is there something nice? Like an ice lake over this cliff here? Looks like it goes down a long way. Turned my reverse thrust off just to get a little more power efficiency going. I'm now all the way up in the air, but is there anything 
down there. No, no there is not. Alright. Fly around this way. I don't know how on earth I would get down that, though, with a wheeled vehicle. Because I'm going to have to. Like, if I... If I'm going to go mine stuff, I'm not going to be mining with something that flies. I'm going to have to mine with something that drives. And that means somehow getting it down here. So that could be an engineering project in and of itself, I think. Uh, prior to flying off this cliff, I was trying to keep it about 50 meters off the ground, because I think that'll give me enough clearance not to hit stuff too easily, but also enough... Um, depth of also enough penetration into the ground with the uh, ore detector to be fairly useful, I guess. I don't think I've spotted anything other than that magnesium and silicon boulder so far. So these scouting trips could be a good reason for me to massively upgrade my power output so that I can do these more often. I'm going to need to charge the batteries up to full to get any decent range of scouting done. How far am I from base? 13 k's. Which is quite a long way, but it's still not much ground covered. <laughs> oh man. It'd be so... I kind of hope that I do, because it would be so cool if I found iron in one of these cliff sides. The stuff I could engineer, the fun I could have with building something to dig into the mountainside there, would be kind of epic. And having some sort of transport system to get down to it, to get the ores back out. Because I'm not just going to build a massive conveyor network. No, 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 no. I, I'd do something far more interesting than that. Something far more fun. Uh, cobalt, silicon. I'm not going to stop though. My power is a bit too low for me to risk stopping for boulders. Will, however take the risk of stopping and maybe having to park if I'd spot underground iron. If I spot that, that is totally worth it. I don't know what I would do to retrieve the drone after that, but problem for future Splitsy to deal with, I guess. That's nickel. Already got a nickel mine. Don't know if that was underground or if that was surface. Ooh, that's underground magnesium. Um, I'm going to quickly mark that. Well, I may well have a cliffside mine, even if it's magnesium. Slash, MG, uh, uh, let's do this quickly. Stop. Oh my, you're in the wrong key. MG. I'm just going to do that. I want to get this done. Get home quickly. Oh man. Okay, cool. I did find something. It wasn't what I was looking for, but I found something. Found an underground ore deposit. That is going to be an incredible challenge to drill to. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So one of the reasons I'm kind of adamantly refusing to build drilling... Well, flying drill things. Uh, flying miners. Is because with the high gravity probably won't be able to make a very efficient one. The amount of power it'll chew through to carry a fairly small amount of ore, because the ore almost weighs twice as much here as on Earth, I just don't see much value in it. I think I'm going to have more fun doing wheeled stuff and drill more out of it. That's kind of my justification for it. The scout ship, this needed to be something that was done with a... Uh, um, something that can fly. Scouting on a wheel, scouting with a rover here would be very, very difficult and incredibly time consuming. We are home. I'm not dead. The drone works. I found a magnesium mine. So I am pretty dang happy with that. Next time, I think I should finish off this hangar. Probably should be able to finish off at least the little office area. I don't know that I've got enough to do these airtight hangar doors, but maybe I'll think about how I'm going to finish off that rear wall, get the turrets up there, and 
hopefully save up enough power to take this drone out again because I'd really like to find an iron mine. I feel like that is something that is, well, very much necessary. So we'll start off with welding up all the little bits and pieces that I've missed and then keep the search going. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then. <laughs>